pam 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 Hey, kia ora. Helen Brahms here coming to you live from Sun City in Arizona. Hope you're having a super fantastic, sparkling, magical Monday. I know I was only on here a couple of hours ago. Was it a couple of hours ago? Three hours ago. I don't remember. <laughs> anyway, so how was your day? What magic did you get to create today? We got to create lots of magic, lots of sparks, and the sparks inspire the magic, and you never know where it's going to go. Um, we had our walks this morning. We had a very productive day. You had the different meetings and stuff. Um, very productive day today, and that's why, like, when I have productive, when I have a very productive day, I create lots of sparks, lots of energy, um, and that gets converted into creativity um so i've had a very productive creative day today so i got to um on the chat it was a little on the quiet side so i got to do some creative um things there um but it's just been a been a very cool day i have to say even though by the time i got to for um got time to knock off work i was sort of like i really need to take a nap um but i didn't I didn't. I mean, I had my pro my protein shake finally kicked in, and I actually went into the bedroom to lay down and pull my blanket out. And Zephy's blanket was halfway across the bed, so she was obviously wanting her bed made. And she lays there and she puts her head up, looks at me, puts her head back down. So I just picked up her blanket and threw it over top of her. And then I went to go and lay on the bed, had my blanket ready, went to go lay on the bed, and I was like, I think we're going to take our walk now. And so we went out for our walk. It was a gorgeous evening. It was a little on the windy side, um, which is why I got this stupid headache right across here from um, walking in the wind and everything else. Um, but it was a great walk. It was, um, again, the head swiveling, noticing new things that have been added, things that have been put away, um, like the house down here that had the really cool white tree and replaced it with this really cool water feature. I walked past and went, water feature's gone it was really cool it stood about three feet high and it was like a an urn thing and then down the middle it had this cutout in it and it had all these little ripple thingies and the water just trickled down it and cycled back up and just kept doing that and it's gone there's you can see where it sat and the outlet for it's right there on the wall and it's gone so either um they decided to get rid of it or they're packing it away because they're getting ready to close up for the summer so we've got a lot of people around the park right now who are um getting making preparations to close up their places for the summer and head back to their um their main homes um like the couple who i was talking with yesterday are heading back to washington next week and i think it's next weekend they leave but, um, yeah, so there's a lot of people who live in park models during the, the winter time are currently packing up and summarizing. Their, summarizing? <laughs> when you hear about winterizing your, your RV and that. So they are summarizing their, their park models. So they're in preparation to um, leave for the summertime and then come back. And we've got these forms. In fact, we go, oh, that's what we could do after I do this. Um, we've got these forms that we have to fill out and return. Are we... An annual resident, um, yeah, you know, if you're an annual resident, you fill out this form and you have to put on the top, it's, this is a confusing form. So they say at the top of the form, <laughs> fill out the top part if you are leaving during the summer and then coming back, you know, because you put down your leaving date and your arrival date, your estimated arrival date, what date you're leaving and your estimated arrival date. So they know how many people are going to be here over summer so they can work out what activities they're going to have over the summer. And then down the bottom portion, if you are staying all, if you are staying through summer, you fill out this portion. But when you fill out that bottom portion, it then says, please make sure you fill out the top portion. I'm like, but you told me if I'm not leaving to fill out the bottom portion. And now you're telling me in the bottom portion to fill out the top portion, but I'm not leaving. <laughs> so I filled out both portions and just put NA for, for arrival date, NA for travel date, um, arrival date and departure date. And um, put a little note on that staying here, staying through the summer. This is confusing. <laughs> so like, that's kind of that's just really confusing when you tell somebody fill out this portion and then you tell them they've got to go back and fill out the top portion it's like why 
you want to make sure your address is correct, I guess. So I just put down my address, my physical address here at the resort. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to go drop that in the box and um, yeah, and then that's me tied in for the summer. It's because I plan to stay here. I'm not leaving. Well, I'm not, if I go anywhere, it won't be in Sparkles. Um, it's just too expensive with gas right now um, to even try and fill the tank up. And plus, I got a lot of work that needs to be done on the engine right now because she's been sitting for so long. Um, but I've also been thinking too, if I'm not going to be traveling as much in Sparkles, yeah, I'm kind of I'm going through all sorts of different thoughts. But I found a really cool Sparkles too, um, which would work very well space wise because you walk in and there's your kitchen dining area. And then you go towards the back, and that's the bedroom, bathroom area. And you go towards the front, and they have a living room area with two theater set, two theater style seat recliners. And then they've got two three seater couches that are in pop outs. Um, and I thought, you know, I could actually remove one of those couches because one's a bed and one's not. So I could move the the one that's not the bed, and I could actually replace that. The, um, the couch in there I could put Zephy's crate in there and then create a desk area and that way I would have my dining area and my desk area right now this is my dining area this is my office space this is my yeah if I got to do anything on the computer this is where I have to come if I need to eat when I eat a meal this is where I come and sit um so it's kind of hard but the dining area has separate chairs it actually has chairs not a not a bench seat and um, it's got a nice size kitchen pantry and all of that sort of stuff I was just browsing around but it's a fifth wheel it's not a class a which is what sparkles is it's a fifth wheel and then I was sort of like oh that means I gotta get a truck get the hitch get towing and then I thought well if I'm not going anywhere in the you know for the foreseeable future that wouldn't matter so much because it gives me a more of a home type vehicle um, and I wouldn't have to have the truck right there and then. It wouldn't be until it comes time to move and then it depends on where I'm moving to. So I'm just sort of like, you know, we'll think about it because next year I have to replace Sparkles next year because the following year and yeah, because she's. 16 this year and when she turns 18 I can no longer have extended warranty on her um and so I'm so sort of like yeah so by next year I do have to replace her anyway um just because of the extended warranty thing and uh but you know for a first start it wasn't too bad and uh, funnily enough I was actually when I was in the laundry on what day did I do laundry Saturday was it Saturday Sunday what day did I do laundry Sunday, Saturday, whatever day I did laundry. I don't even know what day I did laundry. Um, and that was the evening time frame because it was dark. <laughs> there was a couple in there doing this and they're getting ready to head back home as well. And they have a fifth wheel. But when they started living in an RV, they had a Winnebago. So they had the class A Winnebago and traveled around in that. And I said, why did you switch, make the switch? So they gave me their reasons. And I thought, well, that's not a bad reason. And they said, why, what do you have now? I said, I have a Fleetwood Bounder and a 32 foot Fleetwood Bounder. And I'm looking at possibly, because I'm not traveling as much as switching it to a fifth wheel. Um, so I don't have to worry about the mechanics, <laughs> the mechanical side, like an engine. And they're sort of like, yeah, that's a really, they said, that's a really good plus that one. Um, because having the Winnebago, they had, you've got to do all this stuff to winterize it. Um, then you've got to open it all up again. And there's the stuff you got to do, the engine stuff, you got to do the, mind you, you got to do the stuff with the living area anyway, no matter what RV you're in, as far as tanks go and batteries. But then there's also the engine you have to worry about if you're, if you're sitting up for a while. Um, so yeah, so we're looking at possibly, not sure, possibly, um, but I found one because most fifth wheels, the bedroom's in the front. And this one had the living area in the front, which was really cool because you'd have the pop-outs and the pop-outs have windows at either end. And there was a, and the windows are kind of go down kind of low. And I looked at it and I thought, hmm, because Zephy loves being up on the dashboard where she can see everything. 
And I thought, well, and these have nice big windows at either end of the pop-out, along the side of the pop-out. And I thought, you know, if I put her on that couch there, put her bed there, she's got this big windows to look out. She can still see what's going. She can't see what's coming up and down the street like she can right now. Um, but she'll still be able to look out the front, towards the front. And, um, and until I take out the other couch, um, she could go to either couch and look out the windows at everybody. So I was sort of like, yeah, yeah, because if I, if I do it with the bedroom at the front, she may have a window on the bed. She may not have a window on the bed. Um, so yeah, so I've got to think of Zephy and her sightseeing, <laughs> her keeping an eye on everything, her patrolling, because um, she's a very good dog at patrolling. And like the Amazon van pulled up out front today. And I wasn't expecting any deliveries today. And I looked up and I saw it out there. And she just starts going berserk because he pulled up in front of our place and stops and gets out and goes and makes his delivery to across the street. And she's like running backwards and forwards. And she comes over to me whining and getting all excited. And then she goes to the door because I had the door open, but the screen door closed. And she's like looking out there. Where'd he go? Runs back up to the window. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? <laughs> so she was on it. Yes, she was on it today. And I hadn't even told her to patrol, but Anytime somebody pulls up out front, this is her routine that she goes through. So I get up and go and have a look. I'm like, I'm not expecting any Amazon stuff today. And I'm like, what the heck? And um, so I figured it was probably being delivered to somebody else. But she wanted to tell me that he was out. So she got her praise for that. And um, we did some training tonight. And I'm teaching her, trying to teach her to smell rather than whack with a paw. So I, I put a treat in one of my hands and I'll hold it out like this and go, which one? And so she'll just pat at one of the hands and you open it up and whether there's a treat there or not she has a look and has a sniff and I said so she started doing that and I'm like no and as soon as her paw comes up I'm like no smell and put my hands back there every time she brings her paw up I pull my hands back and go smell and then finally she got it oh nose smell nose and um so then she started sniffing around the hands to and then she could and I said then you can pull I said sniff first then tell me which one and she'll either whack it with my with her nose or she will put her paw on it once she sniffed it so we're learning that one we're training on that one yes <laughs> and we will be adding new words on a new button shortly she's got her t button worked out very well um she just walks up to it now and just whacks it and as long as it say and if it doesn't say anything she'll look at it and stare at it. <laughs> and then she'll whack it again and then it says something and then she'll look at me <laughs> So she's getting very good at um, figuring out that it's got to say something. Then I get what it says. So we're going to start adding in, I um, don't know what the next word's going to be. Might be play. Hmm. Might do the play one next. Get her to play with her toys and stuff. But, um, oh, I have to go get mail tomorrow because I didn't get to get it over the weekend. And I know that a friend sent something for Zephy, so we have to go and get the package so we'll probably see if we uh, see if i can sneak it into my schedule tomorrow morning yeah i'll see if i can squeeze it into my schedule tomorrow morning so we can go to the post office i go to the mailbox and pick it up before it gets too hot and get back here before i get dive into my work schedule for tomorrow but um yes i'm looking at my at my planner and i'm like looking this looks like a really good week so it's shaping up to be a really good week. I've got it color coded because I like my color coding. And I can quickly see at a glance what work I'm doing and everything else. So I've always color coded things anyway. Um, but I wasn't using my planner as well as I should have been. And what we learned over the weekend at the Mastermind class has made it so much easier that it didn't actually take much for me to change what I needed to change in order to make it more efficient and uh yeah so it's looking really good so we'll see how it goes but it's so far it's working pretty well it's kept me on schedule um oh i have my evening lives written in here i don't have my morning lives written in here gonna have to fix that but anyway I'm out of here for the night. So what magic did you get to create today? Um, think about different ways you can create magic. If you want some ideas, go back to part one where we talk about um, letter writing, watching sunsets and sunrises, um, 
watching clouds. What else did I have on that list? Um, I'm trying to remember what else we had on that list. Um, are you having dinner with family members and especially the older generations and asking them about their their life before you came along? <laughs> Creating your own life soundtrack. What music do you like to listen to? You know, what mood? What music helps you through certain moods? So if you get angry, what sort of music can you put on to help calm yourself down and get yourself centered again? Um, if you want just something inspiring, what sort of music do you play? If you want to, um, some energetic movie to help movie music to help you help you with your energy levels, what music do you play to help boost your energy energy levels? So um, it was. Um, you know, creating something from nothing, writing letters. And uh, we talked about the, the flower letters. Um, they're really cool. I love getting them. I really do. And I'm sort of like, I don't want it to end. Because <laughs> it's been really cool. But I know that the next letter is going to be something around D-Day since the last one was like the 20th of May, um, 1944. And it's only a couple of weeks from D-Day. So I'm like, are they going to squish another letter in there before D-Day? Or will there be, or do we go to after D Day or on D Day? So it's going to be interesting to see what the next letter is. Um, but I know they're going to be, they go beyond D Day. So you find out what happens um, with this couple who we met in letter one. So it's kind of exciting. It's like a little episode thing, one of these. But it's always fun to get letters and letters and cards in the mail. I love getting letters and cards in the mail. Um, I come home and I sort out my mail cards and letters, possibly junk mail, bills, and whatever else comes in that needs attention. So, and then I'll go, I'm one of those ones that won't do the cards and letters. I save them for last because then I, so I get rid of everything else first and then I can sit down and enjoy my cards and letters. Anyway, I'm out of here. Go have a super fantastic sparkling rest of your magical Monday. And we'll catch you guys back here bright and early tomorrow morning for Tune Up Tuesday. Hey, Gonada. <laughs>